In a remote heart of Australia's Northern Territory lies Tennant Creek, a small town surrounded by the vast arid landscape of the North Australian Craton. Known more for its isolation and history of gold mining than for seismic activity, Tennant Creek became the unlikely epicentre of a dramatic geological event on January 22, 1988. On that day, the earth beneath this tranquil town groaned, shifted and cracked, releasing a series of powerful tremors that would go down in history as one of the most significant seismic events in Australia's history. These earthquakes not only reshaped the landscape, but also challenged our understanding of the seemingly stable continental interior. At around 10.06am, the first of three main shocks struck. Registering a magnitude of 6.3, it was followed by a second tremor of a magnitude 6.4 just a few hours later. And then the most powerful jolt, a magnitude 6.7 earthquake, hit at 9.35pm that same evening. This sequence of earthquakes sent shockwaves through the ground, reverberating far beyond Tennant Creek. Unlike the dramatic scenes often associated with such powerful earthquakes, collapsing buildings and city streets buckling, Tennant Creek was relatively lucky. Despite the force of the quakes, the town experienced limited damage. A few buildings suffered structural cracks and a natural gas pipeline that snaked through the region was bent and buckled by the force of the shifting earth. Remarkably, there were no reported injuries or fatalities. Yet the true significance of these earthquakes lay not in the immediate danger they caused, but in what they revealed about the ground beneath Tennant Creek. The Tennant Creek earthquakes brought to light a complex network of faults beneath the North Australian Craton, a stable block of the Earth's crust that had long been considered relatively quiescent. Yet the seismic events of 1988 proved that even in these ancient and stable regions, the forces of the Earth are never truly at rest. The earthquakes were primarily associated with two main faults, the Kunayonku Fault and the Lake Surprise Fault. These faults are part of a broader fault zone that runs through the Tennant Creek region, hidden beneath the surface for millennia. The 1988 earthquakes caused these faults to rupture, resulting in a dramatic surface expression of faulting that had not been seen in the region's recorded history. Surface ruptures extended up to 32 kilometers forming fault scarps, steep cliffs created by vertical movement along the fault lines that reached heights of up to 2 meters. Geologists and seismologists flocked to Tennant Creek in the wake of these earthquakes, eager to study the rare and powerful intraplate seismic activity. Using a combination of field observations, geodetic data, and seismological analysis, they pieced together a detailed picture of the events. The discovery of reverse faulting, where one block of rock is thrust over another, was a key finding that highlighted the compressive forces at play. Thrust faulting was identified as the primary mechanism behind the Tennant Creek earthquakes. This type of faulting occurs when the Earth's crust is compressed, causing one block of rock to be pushed up over another. In Tennant Creek, this resulted in significant vertical displacement. Thrust faulting is typically associated with convergent plate boundaries, where tectonic plates collide. However, the Tennant Creek earthquakes demonstrated that such forces could also manifest in the interior of a tectonic plate far from any plate boundary. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Tennant Creek earthquakes was the evidence for conjugate faulting. Conjugate faults are a pair of faults that form in response to the same stress field but have different orientations. They essentially work together to accommodate the movement of the Earth's crust. In Tennant Creek, this phenomenon was observed in the contrasting fault dips. The Kuniyonku Scarp showed reverse faulting dipping to the south, while the western segment of the Lake Surprise Scarp exhibited dips to the north. This conjugate faulting added a layer of complexity to the seismic activity, emphasizing the intricate interplay of geological forces. The presence of conjugate faulting in Tennant Creek suggests that the Earth's crust in this region is subjected to a complex stress regime, with forces pushing and pulling in multiple directions. The immediate aftermath of the main shocks was characterized by a series of aftershocks, numbering in the thousands. These aftershocks provided valuable data on the structure and behavior of the faults involved. Seismologists deployed portable seismograph arrays to monitor the aftershocks, mapping their distribution and intensity. The pattern of aftershocks closely followed the main fault planes, confirming the geometry of the faulting and providing further evidence of the complex nature of the fault zone. The aftershocks also demonstrated the ongoing adjustment of the Earth's crust following the main seismic events, as the stresses within a fault zone slowly dissipated. The Tennant Creek earthquakes challenged the notion that the continental interiors are seismically inactive. 
they revealed that ancient fault lines, hidden beneath layers of sediment and rock, could still be active, capable of producing significant seismic events. This realisation has important implications for seismic hazard assessment, particularly in regions previously thought to be safe from major earthquakes. Understanding the potential for seismic activity in intraplate regions is crucial for ensuring the safety and resilience of communities. The insights gained from the Tenon Creek earthquakes have been applied to other intraplate settings around the world, enhancing our understanding of the geological forces that shape our planet. While the Tenon Creek earthquakes are not directly caused by the collision of tectonic plates in northern Australia, the tectonic setting of the region does play a role in the stress distribution across the continent. Australia is moving northward and is in a slow collision with the Pacific Plate. This northward movement creates a complex stress field within the Australian Plate which can lead to intraplate earthquakes far from the plate boundaries. The stress transmitted from these northern collisions can travel across the plate, causing the reactivation of ancient faults in regions like Tennant Creek. One of the most surprising outcomes of the Tennant Creek earthquakes was the change in groundwater levels observed after the seismic events. In the months following the earthquakes, local boreholes used to supply water to Tennant Creek showed a sudden and dramatic drop in water levels, in some cases by as much as 90 centimetres. This phenomenon was attributed to the rapid draining of groundwater from uplifted fault blocks, where the sudden elevation change allowed water to flow more freely. The shift in groundwater levels provided geologists with direct evidence of how seismic activity can impact subsurface hydrology, even in arid regions. This unanticipated consequence of the earthquakes emphasised the interconnectedness of geological and hydrological systems, and proved the need to consider such effects in future seismic risk assessments and water management strategies. The Tenon Creek earthquake serves as a case study that demonstrate how earthquakes can have far-reaching effects beyond immediate structural damage, influencing natural resources that are crucial for local communities. The Tenon Creek earthquakes of 1988 proved that even in the most ancient and seemingly stable regions, the forces of tectonics are at work, constantly reshaping the landscape. The hidden faults beneath Tenon Creek, silent for millions of years, awoke with a fury that shook the outback and provided a glimpse into the restless nature of the region. The lessons from Tenon Creek are clear. The earth beneath our feet is more dynamic than we may realise, and we must remain vigilant, always ready to learn from the tremors that occasionally remind us of the powerful forces at work beneath the surface. I hope you found this as interesting as I do, and as always, thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started the second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.